right. Well, you're listening to the teaser episode of the Brazos River podcast. We called it that because I was thinking of something local. And I've seen another podcast out there, or a few podcasts out there, that I thought, you know, that's pretty clever. Just something local and easy, but recognizable. And so I decided to call this the Brazos River Podcast. And I'm sitting in Granbury, Texas, looking at my gorgeous view of my office. And uh, Colt Henry, who is on the phone right now, is driving. Uh, Colt, you're where? Yeah, yeah. I was actually just at the uh, the tailwaters of the Brazos River down by Houston <laughs> this morning. So I don't know what you mean by local. But <laughs> yeah, well, local in the sense that I just needed something for the name of this podcast that would sound somewhat local. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Colt is my younger brother. He's uh, an avid uh, hunter, angler, all the things. But we decided we'd give this podcast a shot. And uh, so we've got him on the line. He has a primary job, which is what? Uh, shelling perforation equipment to wireline companies. Okay, and you cover where? The United States. The United States. That sounds... Of America. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I, I cover uh, Granbury, Texas. But I will say this. And, Go ahead. Go ahead. I did. I said in Palo Pinto County. Palo Pinto County. Uh, but I am looking out my window right now, and I see a kayaker out in the middle of Lake Granbury right now just going to town on paddling. So good on them. It's 105 degrees outside, but, you know, that's people who are desperate to be outdoors. I get it. That's right. That's right. Uh, Colt, when you are driving, you spend a lot of time on the road. Do you ever listen to podcasts? I do every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy listening to Steve Ranella. I do, uh, listen to more audio books than I do anything. Okay. But as far as, comparison to podcast goes i actually spend the majority of my time on the phone when i'm driving i find my uh i find myself calling my customers and getting my week scheduled for next week with meetings set up and booking hunts and whatever i need to do while i'm free and on the road so you mentioned booking hunts what uh other than selling uh other than selling uh and being kind of in the oil sales business what do you do otherwise I am a co-owner to an outfitter company, an outfitting company called G93 Outdoors, and we uh, cater to the enthusiast of the outdoors. We do we, we do guided striper fishing trips all the way down to guided uh, fly fishing trips for smallmouth bass in the Devil's River. Uh, we offer uh, exotic hunts, whitetail hunts, your upland bird hunts. Uh, your migratory bird hunts. We we try to be as diversified as as the state of Texas will let us be. That's good. What? It, so how long have you been doing it? I have been outfitting for a little over seven years. We rebranded from a company called Cuttle Outfitters that I partnered with our cousin Ike on, and we since then I have brought on a financial uh, partner that is the co owner as well as. A uh, guide named Rusty out of San Angelo, Texas, and we did that in July of 2020, right in the heart of COVID. Yeah. Well, tell me what when COVID hit. I'm curious. You know, this was going to kind of be a teaser, but I might as well interview you while we're here. When COVID hit, what uh, what was that like as far as the guiding business? I think you hear my robot vacuum going on in the background. By the way, it just turned on. So well, ignore that. I may be losing service in a minute anyway, but, you know, COVID was, it was one of those deals. We started this and we hit the ground running. We didn't know what it was going to bring and how it was going to affect the business. It actually ended up being one of the best years we've ever had. Uh, I think it was just more of people wanting to get outside. They weren't as concerned about the cost of things because they were actually getting to go somewhere uh, else than other than their living room, you know, uh, we were able to offer them a ranch of their own for 
you know, anywhere for two to four days, and they could get out there and, and be one with the Lord and enjoy His creation and not fear what the majority of America was fearing at the time. Yeah, so business picked up. Oh, it was, yeah, it, it was so it was substantially better than we could have ever imagined uh, for our first year of starting June '93. Yeah, as we record this, it's uh, the beginning of September. Uh, we're in the beginning of dove season, I guess. Uh, you've been a little busy with that. Uh, what are you prepping for right now? Uh, well, right now we actually have hunters coming in uh, on a dove hunt. They're doing a three-day, two-night stay at one of our ranches. And we're going to be dove hunting and cooking for them, just giving them the experience. Uh, you know, dove season is always a great kickstart for us. It just gets everybody feeling fresh and and giddy and excited about uh, real hunting season, if you will, uh, which for us really kicked off this year, September 30th, and that'll be opening day of both seasons for Whitetail in our, in our county. Sure. So your company, G93, what, uh, what do you guys do during deer season? How many ranches are you working with? Uh, what does that look like? So we contract three ranches. Uh, they are all high fence. On one of our ranches does offer, uh, we can accommodate low fence hunting as far as your pigs and turkey, and that's where we do all of our waterfowl and occasional coal whitetail. Uh, but the majority of what we do is all on high fence. We do have some other ranches that we partner with for waterfowl hunts and sometimes hog hunts as well. Uh, we just picked up another ranch last week that, it's a pretty large ranch uh, for Palpena County, and we're going to be offering our helicopter hog hunts as well as thermal hunts and things like that on it. So, so we uh, we're, we're definitely covering some ground all in the Palpena County area. Perfect. Whenever we talk about these things, Colt and I spend a lot of time together, and it's it's hard to um, well, it, it's hard to have a conversation about hunting and fishing and all those things without having uh, at the back of your mind and even at the forefront of your mind oftentimes the conversation of conservation and uh, one of the things that we want to do for this podcast as we kind of discuss this trailer and what this podcast is going to look like uh, we are going to talk hunting we're going to talk fishing but we're also going to talk about uh, conservation as well Um, I I have a goal to talk to wildlife biologists to potentially game wardens to uh, I've got a lot of questions that I want answered and i think a lot of us want answered but this is a specific focus on texas Uh, we call this the brazos river podcast because uh, i want to cover the brazos river basin and that uh, actually stretches into new mexico believe it or not but the majority of it obviously is in texas and so texas and its surrounding states i want to discover dive into everything that has to do with uh, the outdoors whether you're a woodsman an outdoorsman a hunter an angler Uh, or interested in conservation conservation we want to discuss those things and so that's what we're looking at that's what we're diving into and uh, we hope that you will join colt and i as we dive into these conversations with these special guests sometimes it'll just it may just be the two of us discussing these things but we want to give you tips on hunting colt's going to be better at that than i am we want to give you tips on fishing colt's going to be better at that than i am but we are going to have Uh, folks join us who we're able to have those conversations with and hopefully are able to make you a better fisherman or hunter or conservationist and uh, make myself a better hunter angler or conservationist so we hope you'll join us on the brazos river podcast thanks so much for listening